All right, let's talk about this dream theory that has been floating all over the JJK community, but if you're not caught up on the manga, spoilers beware. All right, so the theory we're gonna be diving into today is the person-persons theory about the last few chapters of Jujutsu Kaisen being a dream or being some sort of false reality. Now, this is an idea we've talked about on the channel recently. I have kind of dubbed it the infinite Tsukiyomi theories because a lot of people have had these ideas that, you know, what we've seen hasn't been real. It's either been somebody's domain or it's somebody's um, dream, you know, whatever the case may be. So the person-persons theory is right in line with that, except they go very in-depth providing a lot of different points to build upon this fact. All right, now before we dive in, I want to get two things out of the way really quick. The first is that I'm not going to be showing the entirety of this theory because it is just far too long and far too in-depth. It would take way too long for me to go line by line and address each thing. So you should check out this theory for yourself, read it in its entirety, and draw your own conclusions. If you're watching on YouTube, I will link it down below. And the second thing I want to get out of the way is just to let it be known from the jump that I don't agree with this theory. And if you've seen my other videos uh, talking about two 70 from this past week. You'll already know this because we've talked about the infinite Tsukiyomi stuff and I have proposed what I think is a more logical explanation for the title of the chapter Dreams End in reference to Gojo's dream. Now I'm not going to go over all of that. I have another video where I talk about it. I'll link it down below if you want to check that out as well. But I wanted to get that out of the way because the way I'm going to go through this is I'm going to express why I disagree with these various points as we go on. And I didn't want that to be like a negative or combative thing because that's not the energy at all. I love in-depth theories like this, so I am a huge fan of how this was put together. But again, just wanted to set expectations off rip because this is a really cool theory. So I don't want people to be like, yep, this is what's happening and then be disappointed if it doesn't happen tomorrow. So I don't agree with it, but it's still really cool. And now let's talk about why. All right, so the person-person's thesis statement is basically 268 through 270 is weird and there are some strange things going on, and they think there are two possibilities to explain why. Basically, either A, it's bad writing because Gege is burned out, or B, it's all been intentional subterfuge to set up for this twist. Now, I disagree that those are the only two possibilities, but that's what they're going with, and they think it's number two. The first thing they talk about is how seemingly in 270, Maki reveals that the plan is probably going to be Yuji and Hannah going around trying to save the rest of the incarnated sorcerers. Person Person thinks that's strange because we previously had thought that impossible. And here we have these panels where they're talking about souls and how, you know, Hannah basically says, yeah, I don't know if you're going to be able to save your friend Megami. Like most of the time, these incarnated sorcerers just like completely overwrite their original hosts. That's why I view them as abominations and, you know, blah, 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 right? So fair, I think we all went into this uh, prior to 270 not knowing what the fate of those sorcerers are going to be. They didn't even know that their plan with Megami was going to work, right? But I think this can just as easily be written off as, well, now we have proof of concept, right? Megami proved that this is possible with Jacob's Ladder plus Yuji's unique ability to strip people from the soul thanks to his soul perception and punches, we actually can strip incarnated sorcerers from their hosts. Hannah slash Angel obviously would have had no understanding of what Yuji was capable of. So while it could be that that is impossible and the fact that they're planning to do that points to being a dream, I think it's far simpler of an explanation to just be like, well, hey, we just found out this does work because we did it with Megami, so why don't we try to do it on the other sorcerers as well? The next point of strangeness that they reference is the fact that Megami is only a little bit hazy, even though he was afflicted by unlimited void. And as we know, that should really do a number on people's minds, right? So I actually agree with this. This was a little strange to me as well. However, again, devil's advocate, there is a bit of a weird nuance to the situation, right? Because Megami did take on the effects of Unlimited Void in order to adapt for Maharaga. However, Megami was like the dormant vessel within Tsukuna's and Sukuna was presumably like utilizing the brain at the time. They don't, there aren't like two brains in Megami's body, even when Sukuna is incarnated in him, right? So, on one hand, Sukuna wasn't affected, but he just put it on Megami, right? So, like, how does dormant soul Megami's brain get affected by unlimited void compared to like 
normal physical in the flesh Megami who might be affected by it. Now, I know that's very weird, but there's at least some room for like, okay, maybe it wasn't as bad because of just the extremely unique circumstances that he was undergoing it. I don't know. I'm not saying that that is the answer and that makes it easily wash away, but I do think there's wiggle room here that you could at least justify, okay, yeah, maybe Megami is a little hazy, is a little weird, but like this is why he's not just straight up brain dead. The next thing they bring up is just weird positioning and paneling during this scene where everyone is talking. How like in this scene you can see where Inumaki is standing is where Toto seems to be sitting and I can chalk this up to just like, you know, maybe a continuity error to some degree or maybe, you know, Inumaki took two steps out of frame and that's why we can't see him here. But then the main thing they talk about is how Higuruma uh, appears and startles Yuji and I think this is just a misinterpretation of what's happening in this scene because that's not what I took from this at all and I even talked about this moment in one of my previous videos from this past week uh, I don't think these uh, speech bubble dots are representative of Yuji being startled at Higuruma's appearance like as if he had just you know evaporated into the room no I think this is a reaction to what Higuruma had just said which was basically admitting that he wished he had died on the battlefield saying it wasn't the plan for me to still be alive here Yuji is reacting to that statement being like whoa Higuruma's still in a dark place so that's how I understand that and I think that makes more sense than him being you know startled that Higuruma just teleported in the next few points they bring up are the fact that Yuji is sometimes drawn with his fingers even though they should be missing and Megami is drawn without his scars even though they should be there and were literally there in the panel before saying that that is representative of like a glitch in the matrix and I chalk this up to just a mistake from Gege. This is something that he has done throughout the entire manga specifically with Yuji's pinky but also with the uh, damage to his ear. Gege has just forgotten to include that at times and has even made comments on it and you know corrections on it in the volume correction so to me I feel like the simpler explanation here is just that these were details that were missed or forgotten in the moment so next up, Person Person takes all of these strange occurrences and says, what do we make of this? And their conclusion is that this seems to be some sort of dream or false reality. And then they talk a little bit about Buddhist symbolism and, you know, the meaning of dreams in that realm. So y'all can pause to check this out if you'd like. They then go on to talk about Yuji's domain and how we see that it kind of creates a false reality that him and Sukuna explore. And that also this ability and this thing about dreams and the cursed realm runs in the family because we also see Kenjaku talk about this and we see him do something very strange whenever he is saving the people from the culling game, namely uh, Yuji's classmate friend when he kind of grabs her by the hand while she's sleeping and guides her out of the culling game's zone so that she'll be safe. The point they're getting at is that maybe something similar has been what's going on for these couple chapters, whether it's related to Yuji's domain specifically or whether it's related to the cursed realm in the same way that we saw Kenjaku use. He then brings up how we see Yuji's domain seemingly shatter, and yet we know when a sorcerer merely withdraws their domain, it shouldn't shatter. So perhaps something broke Yuji's domain that we're not like aware of yet. They also bring up uh, the Kashimo end sequence and the Jogo end sequence where we seemingly see Sukuna and both of them in these like altered reality states at the end of their lives. But I don't think those things are equivalent to what this dream or Yuji situation would be, even hypothetically, because Sukuna revealed to us what those were when he was in Yuji's domain expansion. Because he goes, what is this? I don't know what this is. And he compares it to a moment during Jujutsu battle when like things are at their peak between two sorcerers how you can kind of go to another place so i think that is what's happening with kashimo and jogo and then if this was some sort of weird hypothetical dream state situation it wouldn't be that However, Person Person ties in another kind of alternate reality thing we've seen with Yuji, and that is the false memories that we've seen both with Toto and with Choso. These don't seem to be tied to peak Jujutsu sorcery or moments before death, so there is some precedent for Yuji doing weird stuff like this unrelated to that. Uh, but interestingly, we do know that Gege at least once said that these two things were not connected. We know why Choso had this vision, and Toto is just crazy and that's the best explanation we've ever gotten as far as that one goes. 
Apologies for this section being a bit rambly, but again, read the theory yourself. They're basically laying out all the evidence that sets precedent for Yuji or at least somebody else to have this sort of weird ability, false reality, dream, whatever you want to call it. So that person person then talks about how everything has just been going really well for the last few chapters, and that could be a product of the dream as well. Like, it's all too good, too good to be true, right? And you can pause to read this entire thing, but they're basically saying that, the weird glitches we've just spoken about, and also the fact that Gojo hasn't been mentioned could all be attributed to this, because Gojo is truly sad, and they don't want to, like, disrupt the dream by dealing with sadness in that way. And that is an interesting explanation for the strangeness around the absence of a Gojo Gojo mentioned, but uh, in my opinion, I think that strangeness does exist around Gojo, but it's been an intentional narrative tool because I still think another shoe is to drop, just not in the form of a twist that they're all in a dream, but just in the form of some development with Gojo that will be revealed in the final chapter. Not necessarily that he's coming back, but just some development, which may be a comeback. But again, yeah, they're tying this all together saying it's just too weird. It's got to be a dream. And then next, there are two more pieces of evidence that that person person brings up as weird things that point to it being a dream. The first is Gaku Ganji. They say it's out of character for him to have told the characters in 270 that it's all going to be fine. Take your time. You're still young. I disagree with that being a weird dream glitch. I think that's Gaku Ganji's narrative arc. I think that that's what they've been building toward with Yaga telling him his secret, him not telling the rest of the higher ups, Gojo sparing him and basically saying, an old dog can new learn new tricks. You would be, things would be different if you were in charge, Gaku Ganji. I think this was all part of Gojo's plan. He trusted Gaku Ganji. That's why he didn't kill him. He is helping to lead Jujutsu society to a better future. I talk about that a bit more in depth in my video that I referenced earlier. And then the other point they bring up is when Toto tells Maki he can't swap her in reference to Yuta's plan. That person person says that's a contradiction because we saw that Toto planned to swap Maki in the domain expansion, out of Sukuna's domain expansion. And I think this is just a misunderstanding on their part because Toto can't swap Maki. So this is truthful here and not a contradiction. He just swapped Maki in the domain expansion part because Miwa was there. That was Miwa's whole job. She went in simple domain to help protect Maki and then Toto swapped them both out via Miwa's Cursed Energy signature. So yeah, I don't think this is a glitch or weird or a contradiction. So yeah, that's the gist of it. And again, read the whole thing for yourself, draw your own conclusions, but I just don't think it makes the most sense. I think there are simpler explanations for the points they bring up. But again, let me just say that I think this would be cool if there was some sort of infinite Tsukiyomi twist like this, but with only one chapter left and presumably no part two, I also just don't think there's the room for something like this. But hey, for all we know, there could be a part two. So yeah, y'all, that's my thoughts on this. Please let me know y'all's down below, but I also want to give a special shout out to Joao and also Lucas, who specifically donated for my reaction to this. So thank you guys so much. And then continuing with a few more questions I've gotten, this one right in line with the dream theory. Trevor brings up two good points. The first is that you may know is like the Japanese word for dream, I believe, and it's also a nickname Japanese people have for the three main characters. It has the first two letters of each of their names, Yuji, Megami, and Nobra. So dream's end could also weirdly be translated to Yuji, Megami, and Nobra's end, which is kind of ominous, especially in tow with all of that potential dream theory we just talked about. He then also mentions how Kenjaku tells Gojo good night and that you know it's time for him to wake up so more kind of potential imagery to tie into all of this very interesting to think about next up we got this question from Barbara who says who rocks the slick back hairstyle the best Sukuna or Virgil from DMC and I gotta give it to Sukuna for Miguna you know that volume cover especially he's rocking it Next up, we got a longer one here from Kofuku, so y'all pause to read the whole thing, and first of all, thank you for the kind words, but they're also just detailing their idea for a JJK spinoff, basically set in the Edo period, and I think this would be a really cool setting for at least a one-shot, if not like an entire sequel. And then next up, speaking of the Edo period and Kashimo, we have this one from Same Here Ramen, and again, y'all pause to read it, but this is the next in the saga of the waffle slash world cutting slash debate, and they are on Team Kashimo, providing some pretty good points about why it was a world-cutting slash. So again, I'm just going to try to step away from this debate, but y'all check this out. 
And then finally, we've got this from TWE. And again, y'all can pause to read it, but it's just some very kind words. And these are some of my favorite compliments and comments to get people that said they started reading the JJK manga or started picking up other manga because of these videos. That just makes me so happy. I just, I love this community so much. Thank you so much, man. That's all for this one, y'all. As always, thank you so much for the support and one chapter left, y'all. Let's finish this ride together. Thank you so much for watching.